Hi, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm Nick with PictureLine, your premier camera store, and we are super excited to be talking today with Mark Cruz from Nikon about the new mirrorless camera, uh, the Nikon Z5. Mark, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? My pleasure. Really excited about the Z5, so let's get into it, Nick. We're super excited about it here at the store as well. Um, one thing that we've definitely noticed is that it's the same resolution. The Z5 is a, shares a 24 megapixel resolution with the Z6. Are they using the same sensor in this camera or is it different in some way? So if we're comparing it with the Z6, the Z5 on paper will look uh, very similar in many of the high level specs. Uh, ISO, native ISO, ISO range is the same, the megapixels is the same resolution, but the actual sensor itself on the Z6 is what's using called a BSI, backside illuminated CMOS sensor. The Z, okay. sorry, the Z6 is using a BSI, backside illuminated sensor. The Z5 is using your conventional CMOS sensor. So what that means is that the Z6, although the native ISO range is the same, does have a little bit of an advantage at the high ISO, namely it has a high two on the Z6 that gives it up to a 204,000 uh, ISO. So um, there is an advantage on the Z6, but um, for most of the high level specs, it's very similar with the Z5. Okay, so bright day, you know, daytime shooting, you're probably not gonna see a giant difference between the two, but in extreme low lighting conditions, the Z6 is still gonna have a bit of a competitive edge, it sounds like. Yeah, but you know where, well, I'll tell you where the Z5 definitely has that edge is, again, the people that are looking at this camera are maybe people that have been uh, contemplating full frame for a time now. Maybe they haven't gotten to it because of price point, because of size. I think we've conquered both those hurdles with the Z5. Uh, we've talked about the price point. You mentioned $13.99 for the body only. I'm showing it right now as well with the 24 to 50 that we announced with this lens. There's going to be a kit option for it for $16.99. So at this price point, I think it makes it a lot more attractive for people to get into not only mirrorless, but full frame as well. Uh, but to your point earlier, I think that uh, people that are looking into getting a Z5 uh, will notice that it doesn't compromise on many of the features from the Z6. In terms of price point, it sits directly in between a Z50, which is a crop sensor camera, as well as the Z6 which was until this point, our entry point into full frame from the mirrorless uh, Z system. Now our entry point is the Z5 and it is very, very, very close to the Z6. Um, save from some high-end video features, which we'll talk about in a bit, it inherits many of the same autofocus features. As a matter of fact, the build quality of it is nearly identical to the Z6. If I show you both of them back here, apart from this knob, at the top here that's been moved to the right-hand side of the camera, you wouldn't tell the difference between the Z5 and Z6. So I think uh, customers will be very, very happy about that. Oh, that's awesome. How does, how does the Z5 do with moving subjects? Like how, what's the continuous frame rate like? What's the autofocus like? How does it compare with uh, some of the other mirrorless options? Yeah, so for, for people coming in looking for a great quality stills camera, they're gonna see a big difference coming from say, your customer is upgrading from a maybe five-year-old DSLR camera and they want a good camera from now in 2020. They also want a full frame camera. The autofocus features and the technology that we have in the Z system that we announced in 2018 surpasses a lot of the limitations that DSLRs had in terms of the layout of the autofocus grid. So we've inherited the same 273 point array that we use in the Z6, but more importantly, it encompasses 90% of the frame. Essentially, you can focus anywhere in the frame, giving you freedom of composition, rule of thirds even, um, and just being able to compose anywhere in that frame reliably, uh, whereas the cluster of focus points is usually concentrated in the middle on a conventional DSLR camera. This also gives us technologies that DSLRs simply don't have using the live view screen of the back, such as face and eye detect. This is based on the same platform as a Z6 firmware version 3.0 which includes face and eye detect, both for stills on pets as well as humans. So domestic pets, such as cats and dogs, it will detect face and eye detect. For video, you can do face detect as well on the Z5. So essentially, this is not essentially, this is using the same autofocus system as the Z6. So there's no compromise, no cutting corners of there. Um, for $13.99, they're getting the same focusing system as a Z6. Well, that's great to know. I know that a lot of people are, are really excited about the, the eye control and the face detect and things like that, uh, that mirrorless brings. It, it's definitely a welcome addition. Uh, no more of that frustration with the autofocus points not reaching uh, the sides of the frame when you're trying to focus on something off center. 
Yeah, and, and the reliability too. This is a combination of contrast and phase detect autofocus points that are right on the sensor themselves. Typically DSLR cameras, there was may, there may have had to been some autofocus fine tuning because the autofocus module is not uh, the same as the sensor. Here it's sure. lined up right on the sensor. So for your customers that are contemplating a mirrorless camera for the first time, what they'll uh, realize is there's uh, the precision of focus on a mirrorless camera is a cut above because the focus points are exactly on the sensor. So no, uh, there's no variance in the in the focusing at that point as far as that's concerned. You have freedom of composition, as I mentioned, with the 90% 90, 90 array and the 273 points, um, as well as the face and eye detect technologies that we can implement on the system as well. So awesome. Um, you mentioned video a little bit earlier. What, what does a Z5 uh, bring to the table from a video perspective? Uh, from a video perspective, uh, this can shoot at 4K, uh, 30p or as low as 24p. So they have free, uh, composition in terms of the creative uh, shutter speeds that they can use and the frame rates that they can use. Now that 4K does come at a 1.7 times crop. That's important to know uh, if you're okay. comparing it to a Z6 and you want to know how you're going to line up your lenses. Uh, full frame, you can shoot at 1080, 60 frames per up to 60 frames per second, but also at 24 and 30 P as well. So you have those options with the Z6. But um, what I will say is that the advantages of shooting, sorry, Z5, the advantages of shooting with the Z system comes with these new lenses. They're using stepping motors. We also refer to them in the past as um, AFP motors, pulse motors that are far quieter, much more energy efficient. Um, and for video purposes, you won't hear the gears moving as you would with our previous silent wave motor lenses um, because of the way that these multifocus systems work. So as far as video goes, you have an advantage um, because you have more silent lenses. We're gonna come out with 24 lenses by the end of 2021 native to the Z mount. Um, you also have things like focus peaking, four different colors. You have uh, zebra patterns on this as well. You have other aids for video such as headphone and microphone inputs on the camera, as well as uh, you know um, audio monitoring on the camera itself. So for a video production device, even using it, what I'm using it right now as a webcam, as a very high-end webcam, you can do that oh, cool. as well. Especially now that we have a USB power delivery with the Z5. This is the first camera that has USB power delivery. So for video production, where you exceed the battery life of the camera, that's always been a problem because you would have to interrupt the production uh, to insert a new battery. We've had uh, battery packs in the past, but this is the first one that will actually let you shoot indefinitely using USB power. You will need the ENEL 15 B or C battery in the camera, but essentially at the most taxing point of the camera shooting 4K, uh, it's actually delivering more cam more power into the camera than it's using. So meaning to say it can record for an indefinite period of time, so long as that USB cord is plugged into something and you can be plugged into your computer, you can be plugged into a wall, you can be plugged into a uh, USB power brick out in the field. It gives you so many more options for video production. That's awesome. Now, I know that some people kind of talk about, uh, you know, cropping in 4K as uh, somewhat of a, you know, kind of a negative thing. Uh, can you speak to, to why that might not necessarily be such a bad thing uh, in terms of resolution? Yeah, you know, um, in terms of the resolution, uh, the 4K is approximately eight megapixels in terms of resolution. It's quadruple the resolution of regular standard uh, HD, uh, it gives them, the 4K really gives you the ability to zoom in and crop with, uh, with less guilt with uh, your, your production. But to your point, you do have to consider the viewing angle. So if what you need is your 50 millimeter to truly behave like a 50 millimeter, then maybe you want to look at the Z6 for that purpose. Um, if you actually want to get a little bit more distance out of your lenses, say you're shooting long telephoto lenses um, and you want a little bit more distance and can't physically get there, then the 1.7 crop might work to your advantage. Uh, but in this case, uh, that's the reality of the lens. Um, but uh, uh, in terms of the resolution, you're going to have a little bit more freedom now to zoom in and crop in post uh, through your video, but uh, definitely giving you better output when you're putting it on a bigger screen as well because of that resolution. So uh, people awesome. have to look at those things when they're deciding between a Z6 or Z7. Z6 will also have 
10-bit output through the HDMI port, as well as 120 frames per second. I just want to get that out there. If people are looking for a video production uh, from the Z system, the Z6 will actually give them 120 frames per second, as well as N-Log or the option for raw output through the HDMI. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, another question that I had is that I know that a lot of uh, mirrorless cameras have started to incorporate some kind of really useful but also creative features through software or firmware or things like that. Um, I, I've seen a few things that kind of stand out to me on the Z5. What, what are some of your favorite things that they've uh, been able to incorporate now uh, on the platform uh, that haven't really been a reality for DSLRs in the past? Well, number one was that USB power delivery that I just mentioned. So this is the first camera that uh, does that. Uh, in terms of software, we did have a development announcement when we announced this camera that we are coming out with a webcam utility. So right now, um, I'm actually using a Z6 to record myself for this Zoom meeting right here. Uh, it's attached with an HDMI to USB adapter into the computer. What our webcam utility will allow us to do is dispense with the HDMI altogether and simply go USB from the camera to USB to the computer. So you nice. cut out the middleman. Um, you also, uh, this uh, utility we're actually uh, allowing to be free. So you, you don't have to buy any special software to make this happen. Uh, it will be free and it will also be compatible with our Z cameras as well as some select DSLRs as well. Um, that's nice. a breakthrough because in our world right now where we're doing a lot more of these web conferencing and streaming <laughs> and things like this, uh, people are a lot more reliant on their webcam that's basically built into their laptop or their desktop. Um, they want to get better quality. They want to be able to adjust lighting, adjust aperture, adjust ISO. You can do that now sure. with, your, with your mirrorless cameras. And we're, that's one of the exciting things that we're delivering. Uh, as far as the Z5 goes, we've also implemented things in here that are exclusive to this camera time lapse uh, we can now do at the same time as interval timer uh, photography so in okay. the past you've, been, you've had to choose between one or the other you can shoot at the full high resolution 24 megapixel interval timer or you you had to choose between that or uh, generating the time lapse now you can do them at the same time so if you're out and about and shooting star time lapse or sunrise sunset time lapse then you want to grab a frame from that basically you would be relegated to the resolution of the video. Now you can have the video and the full resolution stills at the same time. I know you're running short on time, but I would be remiss if I didn't uh, ask one last question, which is uh, related to the memory format. Um, I know that a lot of people have been uh, looking for a mirrorless camera from Nikon that uses dual memory cards. And I noticed that the Z5 uh, is using dual SD slots. Uh, what's the response been like on that and the feedback? Well, I think our, our, our decision to come out with this was based on the feedback that we got right out of the gate when we came out with the Zisto system a couple of years ago. And in less than two years, this is the fourth camera that we've come out with for the Z system, the third full frame. And we listened to the customers in this case want, wanting that dual card slot, the redundancy and the peace of mind that wedding and event photographers need when they do their jobs. Uh, a lot of people said, you know, if you came out with a Z6, even if it was just SD card slots, I would jump to that. Um, and that's essentially what we delivered with this Z5 system. Also, the readily available Z, uh, SD card format is really something that is more in line and congruent with this type of customer base. Uh, but uh, it is UHS-2 compatible, so you can get the high performance 300 megabyte per second cards. Um, they're both uh, SD card compatible here. The, our minimum that we suggest people get is a UHS Class 3 card, and that'll keep up with the 4K uh, writing capability to it. But um, okay. if you're uh, a wedding and event photographer and you wanted to get into the C system, but for whatever reason, just could not uh, do with the single card slot of the Z6, now you have that. And I know a lot of people are out there thinking, well, what do I lose? So, you know, what kind of focusing do I have to put up with now, et cetera, et cetera. This is the same uh, focusing system, essentially the same ergonomics, uh, same button placement, uh, same resolution of the viewfinder, all the uh, same battery in this, same grip, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that gives people the ability to take it out reliably now for events. So I think people are going to be very happy about that. There are three different ways you can set up the dual card slot. You can use it as an overflow. So when one card gets full, it writes to the other. You can use it as a full backup, or you can assign one to be JPEG, one to be RAW. So 
You can even copy between cards. So if there is a file in a one, you want to send one off to a runner, you can copy it to that card in camera and send it off to someone. For video, you can assign one card to write to, so it's either one or the other, but in camera, it will actually tell you how many minutes and seconds you have left available on each card, so you can assign it to the card that has the space that you need. There is a lot packed into this camera. Um, I think it's safe to say that this is a killer value and is gonna sell like hotcakes. Uh, do, you, do you have any idea when we can expect to start seeing these in stores? Definitely. I mean, we're at August, uh, beginning of August right now, end of August, we will have this uh, starting to be on store shelves. I did want to mention the configurations that it comes in. Three different configurations that you'll find in the USA. Uh, number one is body only. So if you're looking, if you're already into the Z system and you just need a second body, um, there's that available. Uh, we also have it available with the quote unquote, I'll say kit lens, but this is kit lens reimagined as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people, yeah. when they go into full frame, one of the reasons they may have balked at full frame in the past is simply the size of the lenses. And there's the physics around the mount. They had to be larger. If you think about all the 24 to 70 lenses out there right now, none right. are this small, this flat, this light. Right. Um, but for the performance that you're getting out of this 24 to 50 millimeter lens, it is something that doesn't compromise on the quality of the sensor. So it's a perfect harmony and that you will save $100 when you get it as a kit. So that'll be $16.99. You can get it uh, lens only uh, for $3.99. Uh, and there is a third option that comes with the 24 to 200 millimeter that will also be a kit configuration for $21.99 with the Z5 as well. So there's three different options you can get the Z5 with. Uh, tremendous value when you get it with the 24 to 50. I will mention the aperture on this is a f4 to 6.3, but what we've realized is, especially for your viewers that are watching this that haven't gone into mirrorless yet, is that because of the quality of the electronic viewfinder, because of the fact you can make it bright, we are able to get past those obstacles that we had with optical viewfinders, where 6.3 was very, very dark in the viewfinder. Now we can see crystal clear through the electronic viewfinder or the back LCD screen, um, what the exposure is. So 6.3 used to be a hurdle, I would say, for DSLR in the DSLR world is now something that's much more a benefit now with the mirrorless system and the Z system well, with because the we have the electronic from, viewfinder. Yeah, and with the cameras performing so much better at high ISO, it's not as much of a hurdle uh, in that regard either, it sounds like. That too, that too, absolutely. So I think we, we, we can, make the right compromises here in terms of size, weight, price point. Um, and I think a lot of people will be looking at this now, especially when it comes out and they have the reassurance knowing that, well, this is essentially a Z6 um, without a couple of the high-end video features. Uh, that's been out on the market now for a couple of years. The reviews are out there. And I think people can confidently pick up the Z5 and know that, well, there's very little that has changed essentially. Uh, you're, you're getting a, a quality, quality entry into full frame at this point. Awesome. Well, Mark, I know that you are busy and have another call lined up right behind me. Uh, so I will let you go. But thank you so much for being here today and uh, talking to our, our audience a little bit about the Z5. We are super excited to see it. And hopefully we'll get to do this again uh, on the next release. My pleasure, Nick. I'd, I'd love to do it again on the next release. So uh, please have me back. Thanks so much. And thanks to all of you that are joining us. If you have any questions, please uh, give us a call here at the store or come in and take a look at the new C5. Thanks for joining us.